What's up guys, I ride 705 here. Today we are going to do crank seal bearings on the 800. I just did the uh, crank seals on that sled. It's my first time, uh, my buddy just showed me how to do it. So hopefully I'm gonna uh, be able to do this for you and show you how it's done. Um, basically you just gotta take off the bolt here on the clutch. I haven't loosened any of this. Um, it's a 21 mil I believe. So hopefully everything comes off nice and easy for you. I'm gonna try to do this with one hand. Beautiful. Now, if you don't have a clutch puller, there's a little trick that you can use with water. I've never done it. Um, I suppose it works really well. You put Teflon tape on here, a lot of Teflon tape, tilt the sled and fill this cavity full of water. Put that in there. Push this in and the water pressure will actually pull the clutch out. But uh, we happen to have a clutch puller here. So we're gonna go that route. Start this in so we don't cross thread it. It's a 7 8 socket for this clutch puller. Hopefully it pops off nice and easy. If not, we have a motivator right there. A little rubber mallet. To whack it. All right. Nope. Well, it's on there pretty good. I don't know how hard you're supposed to hit that. All right, I'm put this thing off. Sorry, you're getting cut off. I'm gonna lie to you guys a little bit. Oh, I just took it off with my fingers, tightening it with my fingers. <laughs> if you have superpower strength, just see what I do. I use my fingers. All right, guys. Um, I got the clutch to pop off. I use a power bar, put it at the end of the nut, and uh, we have this special little tool here to hold the clutch from moving. Just rested it there, turned it. It actually uh, it wasn't actually that hard to turn by hand. I guess the impact electric drill uh, is not the strongest thing in the world. Just cranked it and um, tapped it with the hammer again, just a little small tap and it popped. Don't really like beating on it the way I did with the, with the hammer. Um, I probably should have took out the torque bar first and did that, so. Try a torque bar before you go all crazy with the, uh, the hammer. And that's it. So, um, clutch comes off, pops off. Oh, wait a minute. There you go. Pull out our puller. A whole bunch of patience. My little bastard. There we go. Now, should be able to pop this off. Get our belt off of it. Oh. There we go. One clutch removed. This sled here comes with a gizmo to grease your bearing. Um, I guess it actually it does have a little hole or it looks like it maybe a little hole here for the grease to come out of I'm not too sure um, I'm gonna pop that off anyways I want to actually look at it I have a new seal so I'm gonna put the new seal on it and um, I may or may not put this case back on I'm gonna see what that looks like uh, I might just use it to retain the bearing or to retain the seal actually and uh, delete that whole deal and uh, that's it so next step guys, I'm going to grab some torques, a uh, little bit, get rid of this thing here. Um, I'm going to do that with the camera off, it's pretty simple, four bolts, that'll come off. And then I'll show you what the seal looks like and how we pop out the seal, how we repack it. And uh, hopefully it's good. The last sled we did, the uh, 600 here, it's a 600 base, it's all reassembled now. And the, uh, the seal itself was really brutal, it, the oil was hard. And that's what happens with these, the heat gets to them. And then you can see the oil, that came, the uh, grease that came out of it. It's actually, it's not crazy hard, but it's, it's, it's kind of glazed. It's almost like in chunks. Still got some greasiness to it, but that's no good. It's all empty. It was just bad. So we repacked that with some nice fresh grease. And hopefully we'll be good for another couple thousand kilometers. Skidoos are notorious for doing about 5,000 clicks. 
and then that seal lets go, runs lean, and you pop your top end, and not fun. So this is definitely something you guys should do every couple thousand kilometers. It's, a, it's not a big job, but there's not many videos about how to do it, so that's what I'm doing here today. So we'll see you in a few minutes. All right, guys, I have the bolts off on this plate. Normally, it's just a regular plate. You don't have this billet aluminum deal. Like I said, this is an aftermarket deal, but the same concept. Take the four bolts off. This comes off. Nothing special. Oh, boy. This is different. Wow. Look at this shit. Well, here it is, guys. Here's a good scenario of a sled that is not going to last long. Look how like, chunky and gross this grease is. Dark, black. Yeah, not very happy with this whatsoever. So this one here has an O-ring, I guess, built into it. And um, there's no seal. I do have a seal here. Fuck, I can't even put the seal back in because there's no retaining plate. Shit, shit, shit balls. That's discouraging. I could clean this up, pack it manually with grease, put this back on there and use it as a crank seal. Um, the only thing I don't like is it's just really dirty and I don't know how well this is. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean this up really well and inspect it. And if it's nice and clean and not, you know, no damage whatsoever, then I'll, uh, I'll actually go and clean everything, repack everything, and then just use this as my seal for now. I'm going to get a seal retainer, which is just a plate that goes over this from BRP. And I do have an extra seal here. Like I said, I bought one. I'll put the actual OEM seal back in and can the system all together. I don't know if the last guy that had this just never used it or if this is it under use. Um, a lot of people were talking about these and we were kind of worrying about you put the grease in, where does the grease come out? But there is a hole here for the grease to come out. So I guess if you keep packing this full of fresh grease till it comes out here, it sort of makes sense. But I don't know if the guy never did it or what, but this is, this is horrible. There's hardly any grease in there and the grease is just brown and gummy and gross. So we're... Uh, I'm going to go in with a rag, clean, clean rag, wipe that out as best I can, get rid of all the old grease, and I'll turn the camera back on, show you where I'm at, and we'll go from there. Fun, fun, fun. All right, guys, I have this all taken apart and cleaned out as best I can. There's still some grease in the little cracks. I didn't use any solvent in here. Um, I, you know, I, I do have parts cleaner and stuff like that, but I definitely don't want to send a bunch of parts cleaner in there. First of all, I don't know if it's going to eat away the seals. Secondly, I'll never be able to get it all out, and I'm scared that when I add new grease in there, it's going to dilute it and make it all crappy. So, we have our little tube of Isoflex grease. Um, the last one when I did it, when I first started squirting, a lot of like, liquid came out of it, almost like uh, you know, when you let ketchup sit for a long time. So, I'm going to try to stir this one up a bit as best I can. Shake it, maybe. Shake it, shake it. And that's it. And we are going to pack this whole race here full of grease as much as we can. So, here we go. Uh, let's see a little bit of liquid, but not, not too bad. So, I'm just going to press this tight and just work my way around packing that grease in. Hope you guys can see that. There, this is special grease, it's called Isoflex. Um, this is the stuff you want to use. It's, yes, it is crazy expensive. Um, I don't know if another grease can be used like white lithium as an alternative, but I wouldn't do it. Sleds are worth way too much to, uh, to gamble on grease. So that's the stuff right here. Chapow. I bought my kit on eBay. It came with all the seals. This one actually came with seals for everything. Um, all we really need is the big seal. But because I have this little bearing buddy, whatever you, whatever you call this thing, um, I don't need that. So I'm going to pack this in as best I can. I don't need to show you any more than what I just did on the video here. And then I'm going to put grease on the shaft here as well. And in between this little seal here, I got this all cleaned up. It looks okay. So you just want to grease inside here and pack that full of grease as well. So that's going to be lubricated all the time. The grease, when you put it in there, you don't want to put so much grease that when you're pressing in your seal, there's no room for that grease to go. And you're going to blow the seal that's on the inside. There's two seals on the, on the, uh, on the crank. There's one on the inside, one on the outside. So if you pack in too much grease and you press it in there, you'll actually break the seal on the other side and create all kinds of havoc. So you got to make sure that when the grease is in there, you assemble everything. You're not packing grease forcefully into that, that chamber. Um, the seal itself, 
the rubber ones, there's a cavity there you can actually fill. You'll see that it sits flush on this and here, that face on that face, and there's a cavity. So I filled that up full of grease on the other sled. Uh, this one here looks like it's going to go down almost flush to this face. So I have all the grease flush with this face here on both sides. So when I press it in there, I'm not going to be forcing that seal out. So I uh, hope that helps. Um, that's what you normally would have, that metal plate there. We didn't have that because we had that special grease greasing deal. I don't even know what they call it. Not a bearing buddy, but whatever it's called. So that's what you're going to be looking at. Four bolts and then the seal's there. Grab a screwdriver, just pop that seal off. I bought a new seal. I recommend doing that. It's not expensive. Put a new seal in there after you've repacked and cleaned everything out. Um, I'm about to put the clutch back on right now. So I'm just going to run you through that. I made sure that both tapers were nice and clean, of course. We have our torque wrench set to 85 foot-pounds. Pop that on there. Now it's going to want to rotate, so you need to stop it from rotating. And that's where that, that special tool that we had to hold the clutch comes in handy. I don't know where he bought this. I don't know if he made it. It sure looks like something somebody made, not something that's bought. If I could find it. We have four sleds on the go today. It's right there. So this is a little bar here. It's got two welded bolts on a bar. It's something, definitely something you can make. It's nice and handy. It slides right over here. And it rests up against your bar there. Let's see if I can put this in my shirt again. There you go. And this is pretty, uh, pretty easy stuff. You just tighten it till it snaps. Holy crap, that's tight. Is that set to 85? Yep. Yeah. There it goes. Starting to, starting to wonder if this ratchet was working at all. I just used it a few minutes ago and it seemed to work fine. So there you go. So you're looking for a couple little snaps like that. Good to go. It's torqued down. And uh, hopefully the clutches won't come apart at 100 miles an hour. Well, that concludes the bearing repack. Sorry that there wasn't a seal on there. I totally, totally forgot about that deal, that pre-greasing deal. Um, I might turn on the video when we do the 600. Again, it's, it's pretty much the same as this. Um, definitely something you guys could do alone. Definitely something you should do. Guys, just, just do this. If you have anything over 3,000 clicks, do it. They're prone to go at uh, 5,000 kilometers. I don't know if that's 3,000 miles. So... Uh, that sled there was showing 200 or 2,000 something something miles on it. I'm not sure if that's correct because uh, it's kind of a Frankenstein, so I don't know where the odometer came from. But that's what we pulled out of there. So, yeah, definitely needs to be done. I'm told on the mag side that there is another seal there. It's not as bad because it doesn't get the heat from the clutch as much. But that one there, you have supposedly have to split the crank to get to it. So that's a big, that's, you know, that's a big ordeal. That's an engine job. So I'm not going to do that and hope for the best. But um, if you ever have your crank apart, that's definitely something you're going to do, obviously. So there we go, guys. That concludes it. Hope you guys enjoyed that. I got a lot more videos coming. Soon there's going to be snow. Well, soon. <laughs> Another month from now, hopefully there's going to be snow. And actually, we have to ride this thing and do some blogging riding the sled. It'll be awesome. But for now, we're just going to be doing a bunch of blogs of... Uh, of us fixing the sleds and modifying them, do whatever we need to do to get them ready for winter. Peace.